I'm not saying this is the best habit, but stick with me. You have a pack of cigarettes, you have some weed, you have cigars. Some of these things are very expensive. Essentially taking money to light it up. Many people do this and they enjoy it. And the smoking money concept is a certain allocation of your income for things that bring you, bring you pleasure. There's this uh, notion that every dollar must be accounted for. Bitcoin will not be used as money because everyone is afraid to spend it because they want it to go up in value and they want to hold on to it. That's the premise of many of the people who are looking at every dollar as an economic soldier in this economic war that you're going to fight this good fight and I need all of you and we can't have any of you going to our pleasure. I used to think like that and I didn't. I was in the storage auction business so I, my stuff quota was always full. I mean, I was like, oh, this is a better dining room table than the one I have in my home. So let's just switch this out and sell this one. So I had a house that was full of gorgeous furniture, fine pieces that I paid little or nothing for or absolutely for free. Because if I took, say, that was this leather sofa set and I took it out of the unit and the unit cost me 300 bucks, then I sold everything but the sofa set for like 1200. The sofa set was absolutely free. That's how I lived for many, many years. So it's a odd combination of me being compared to someone normal. I'm, I'm not normal. I don't have a normal life. I am atypical as you can all get out. And I like that and that's good. And I want you to be atypical because if you're normal, that means that you can only have money to hang out on the weekends. You can't take trips and stuff because this is a personal issue that's starting to bubble up. But you want to take five to 10% of your income and never look back. If you can afford a Ferrari on five or 10% of your income, do it. I don't care what anyone says. If you can afford a mansion on five or 10% of your income, do it. One of the things that has happened is this pathological frugality that has deepen and become more than the mindset. I'm seeing people who claim to have net worths of 4.5, 6, 7, 8 million, and they're afraid to spend money. Well, if I go out and get this new car, I, I, I'm such a loser. Part of living and part of enjoying life is spending money. The money income profit way of manage the money you have very well and make more money. Here's my situation. The only bill, well, personal bill, not even personal, it's part of business. The only personal bill I have is the insurance on my car. Cell phone bill, business expense. Uh, house, business expense. Second vehicle, it's owned by the company. And I, I live very nicely. And I want you to live very nicely. And this super frugality has a point, let's say, you are broke dick Danny married to panelist Priscilla. And the collectively as a couple, you guys make $45,000 a year. You're poor. I get it. You will have to do this pathologically cheap stuff for a period of time to get out of the hole that you're in. Because once again, middle class income, not upper middle class, but middle class income for a single person is 100K. I don't care what the government stats say. I don't care what your friends say. I am just going off of the experience of how my life changed when I reached these income milestones. When I got to 150K a year, my life literally changed. And I was still doing some stupid stuff. I was still spoiling money. I still eat out most days. <laughs> I, I still do that. And once again, when you make more money, there's room for this smoking money. Like uh, Cuban cigars, I am not a smoker and I don't want to even hear any trash in the comments. But I know that some Cuban cigars can be very expensive. And if that's your thing and if that brings you happiness, do it. Don't go, well, I can't have the Cuban cigars because I need to put the $150 in this index fund and now because 13 years later it'll be $152,000 so essentially if I smoke these cigars today they're going to cost me $152,000 per year in the future. 
You know how crazy that is? I understand you need to manage your money. I preach it. I talk about it. But that is insane to me because I'm going to give you an example of how you should let money go. I had this beautiful Fender bass. The blue book or the internet said it was worth $6,500. Perfect condition, right? I have it up for $6,500. I have it on eBay. I have it on reserve. No one ever pays. A lady comes into the warehouse. She sees it and she says, I'll give you $5,200 right then and there. No, no. The internet says it's worth $6,500 plus blah, 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 right? I sat on that piece for year, not years, but almost a year. Then someone else comes in and says, hey, would you take 45? I held my hand out. I could have made $700 more if I had let it go. And what I'm telling you is stop looking back. You can't change the past. If you, I was stupid. I spent money like crazy. I bought a car, paid cash, didn't pay. I can't go back and change that. What I can do is like, look, you know, self, that wasn't really a good thing to do. We don't do it no more. Do not be looking back because uh, the thing with Bitcoin, uh, someone bought a pizza with Bitcoin. And then it was like, well, this pizza was like $2 million. And I'm just like, oh, God. Make more money. Make more money. <laughs> Enjoy your life. And have purpose in a sense so you can have some smoking money. Because if you live this pathologically frugal life, let me, go t let me tell you what's going to happen. First of all, most folks are not wired for that. That's the big problem. There's a group of people who can do it. They, can, they have the willpower, they have the discipline, they have the personal disposition to do that stuff. Um, me, I, I'm not that person. I am not that person. I look at, okay, well, I have this coming in and I can spend 10% of this any way that I want to. And that's how I do it. Because when you get so tight that you can't take a chick out, you can't, Buy yourself some new clothes. You, because I, I, I've been watching a lot of these videos, and it, it's personal finance interlaced with personal self-esteem. Don't buy these shoes because you don't need them to feel good. To a point, I, I agree with that. But if you see some shoes that you want, like I got some a pair of shoes on that are Todd T O D D S, and I saw this guy who came into the office to put my internet in and he had a blue pair and I was like, those are some nice looking shoes. And he's like, oh yeah, they are. and I went to, and I went to the internet and these shoes are $650. I bought them. Yep, sure did. I've had them for about three, four years. I like them. And if something else comes in here and I know a lot of people just went, good Lord, $650 for some shoes. Are you insane? And you know what? I understand you because when I was in the store charging business, I was the same way. I couldn't fathom it. I couldn't see it. Couldn't. No, it was just mm -mm. no, 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 no. I, I, I can get me a whole unit for 10 bucks and get me a new wardrobe. Are you crazy? 125 bucks for a shirt. But I have grown as a person and I want you to grow. And th the secret is make more money. Uh, many people try to shoehorn their life into their income and try to expand it. This is why credit drunk on credit has become such a huge issue because people don't have the money to live like they want to but if they made a few changes in the way that they looked at stuff and the way that they lived in time they could have both they can spend money on stuff they want and they can have nice things like Japanese and Chinese people are name brand people yet they have the highest savings rate in the world Asians if you're in Georgia and you've been up towards Satellite Boulevard, um, up in Duluth, there's a, God, it ain't Jimmy Carter. I forget the name of the road. But there's this Best Buy off of this main street. And that's where a lot of Asians are. And all you see are Mercedes and BMWs and Lexus. And they got money in the bank and many of them their houses are paid for. So you can have both, but it's make more money. That's what you got to do. You got to make that a mantra. Match the money that you have and make more money. All right, so kids, I got something new for you. 
It is the Side Hustle Starter Pack. Uh, I've had many people who's like, look, Lyndon, I, I love you. I love the videos, but I can't afford that monthly fee. No problem. It's $147 and it's 23 courses and it's a few hundred hours, almost a little bit over 100 hours of training across various disciplines. Craigslist, a YouTube starter kit. Now, this is a way that you can get into the frame and start making some money because you, you got to get started. Now, I want you to understand where I came from. Where I started. I didn't start with any money. I started off homeless. That's where I started. So if I can do that with hard work and st strategy, because this is what I'm giving you. I'm not giving you um, a get rich quick scheme. I'm giving you strategy where you can make an extra 300 bucks a month. And for many people, that's the difference between eating and not eating. You can make an extra thousand. You can make an extra 1500. And the thing is, that this doesn't just stop with getting the course. You stay on the path, you figure out what works for you, year after year after year after year, you make money if you don't stop. So go below, it's first link. There's some other stuff for those of you who are ready to get into something a little grander. And I'll see you guys in the next video.